Okay, so good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our virtual teacher talk session. Our goal today is to help interns understand what's next for them. Today we have representatives from Clay County District Schools and um, I'll let them introduce themselves in just a minute. My name is Patty Palmer. I'm the coordinator for career employer services for the College of Education and Human Services. And I, I am Kathy O'Farrell, Director of the Office of Academic Support and Information Services. And you are about to learn quite a bit about your next steps on your journey to becoming a professional educator. Hi, I'm Michelle Biley. I am with Clay County District Schools Human Resources. I'm an instructional um, specialist with the department. Prior to joining Human Resources, I was a classroom teacher. I have experience working with uh, both junior high and elementary students. Uh, so I've kind of experienced the hiring process both uh, from getting that first job as a teacher and now from the HR side. Hi, I'm Samantha Wright, HR Supervisor um, in Clay County. Um, I'm here to assist with certification and the application process and get you guys across the finish line to getting a job. Thank you. So thank you, Clay County, for representing today and helping us out with answering some questions related to steps that our um, interns will be taking in the next few months. Um, so I'll just jump right in and my first question is regarding teacher certification process. So if one of you would enlighten us a little bit about your teacher certification process. Michelle, you want me to take that one? I'm going to let you take that one since you are our certification expert and then I am still learning the ropes. So um, as far as new graduates, you have all the criteria to get a professional certificate. Um, you will need to apply to the Florida Department of Education for your teaching certificate. If you have multiple areas, it's $75 per certification area. And um, you need to um, send your transcripts because they will not evaluate you for your certificate until you're Official transcripts are at the Florida Department of Education. So once those become available from UNF, um, you need to have them sent immediately to the Florida Department of Education so they can evaluate you for your professional certificate. One of the things that um, I would like to encourage you guys is I know coming out of your internship that you may look at that application and go, wow, $75 per area. And you might have your elementary education, you might have completed your ESOL endorsement and your reading endorsement. So you might be thinking, oh, that's $75 times three. But I really encourage you to go ahead and put that on your certificate because it does make you much more marketable um, when administrators are looking because they see that you've already got those endorsements and you're not going to have to be worried about being tagged out of field in those areas. Great, thank you. Um, very thorough, so I appreciate that. So um, when talking about hiring procedures, what are the different procedures and steps that uh, students have to take and what expectations should they have? So um, our actual positions for Clay County external um, applications will um, the positions will be posted on uh, May 11th. So May 11th, um, they will get to see them. Um, and on, we have a new application system in Clay County. So um, using the new application system, you choose which job you want to apply for. The first time you apply, you'll create your entire application and then subsequent um, positions you're interested in, you will clone it and it will go um, to that application. I would say that um, you don't have to attach your transcripts because I, uh, I, Clay County, can see them at the Florida Department of Education once they get there. Um, but I would attach a VDA 
Um, and the reason why is because you can individualize it to each school you're interested in. So if you're selling yourself to a school, which is really important, um, you go at, and check out that school's um, test scores or check out that school, what kind of um, things that school would be interested in having you as a teacher. So you may be great at teaching math in the elementary grades and their math scores may be really low. So you in that letter of introduction and would give that information. So you individualize it for each application. I would definitely think that that's important um, and makes you sellable. You also have to have a reference from your internship supervisor. Um, so you, I would go ahead and, and um, um, talk to your intern supervisor and directing teacher now to let them know that on May 11th, they will be getting a reference form and it's electronic and all they have to do is go ahead and fill that out. So um, those are my recommendations as far as the application system um, and how they have to prepare themselves. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea prior to or while you're in the application process to spend some time on our website and the www.oneclay.net. Look at our different schools. We have 42 different schools in very different areas um, throughout the county and get to know a sense of what are those schools, what are those communities that they're in. Look at what appeals to you, what can you bring to that school, what can you offer? Because principals really want to know that they're hiring somebody who wants to be at their school, not just, I'll take any job anywhere. Um, so that definitely does stand out when you can speak to the uniqueness and the individuality of that school. So what advice would you give to um, a student who maybe has three or four different job prospects? Um, I really think if they're in a position uh, where they've got three or four different schools that they really like or three or four schools that are interested in them, one, that's an amazing place to be um, because that really shows that you are top of your game and principals are really going to be interested in that. And so I would start looking and ask questions when you're in the interview process about, you know, who are teachers within that building that the principal would suggest that you mentor or that you learn from? Self-identify what your weaknesses are, because we all have them, and look to see how the school is going to help you grow through those weaknesses to make them strengths. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I've gone to the website. I've submitted my application. And now what do I do? What happens to me next? Do I get so, an email or? So you submit your application, like I said, for individual positions with our new application system. And the next step is the principals will either call or email you with an invitation to interview. Um, and it really depends on the principal and what they're looking for as to whether they request an interview from you. So that's why it's so important to sell yourself in those attachments on that application because they're just looking at you and a file. Um, they're not interviewing you yet. They don't know your personality. So we want to get your personality across as best as you can um, and making sure that you sell yourself and what can you do for them as a school individually. So that's what will happen. The principal will either call or schedule an interview with you um, to come in. And so since the pandemic, how has the interview process changed? Um, we are willing to do um, whatever is easier and better for the teacher. And every principal has been given the option to do it differently. Um, they can do, we do Google Meet. Um, we don't do Zoom, but typically most people um, are familiar with Google. So um, we can do Google Meets. Um, they can do um, FaceTime interviews and they can do actual face-to-face -face interviews if they feel comfortable and we have that social distancing um, 
six foot range in an office. Um, but I believe that most principals at this point in time will be doing virtual interviews. Okay, thank you. Um, what are some methods of support that are available to first year teachers? So we do offer um, a beginning teacher support structure system where our beginning teachers come in and um, in the past they come in in the summer for a three day kind of an intensive program where they bring in our instructional coaches. We work through some different behavior management ideas, a lot of information that gets them comfortable with what are the expectations in Clay County. It also lets them build a network of support. They can meet other first year teachers um, throughout the district and they form those relationships and can then kind of lean on each other as the year goes on. We do offer um, our instructional coaches this year. Our instructional coaches have kind of um, spread out and they are organized by content area. So if you find that you're a beginning teacher and you're struggling at the, let's say, elementary level with science, our science coach will come in and work with you. So they're the expert in science. So you can get that really customized support that you need by content area. Same with our secondary, our coaches are specialized. And um, so you have that option. Something else that um, I've kind of worked with human resources on is really just reaching out and checking in with our first year teachers via email and saying, how's it going? Is there anything you need support with? Um, I can also come out into classrooms and support in a completely non-evaluative manner. So it really gives them that safe space to say, I'm struggling with something and they don't have to worry about that conversation going any further than the two of us and working through it. So those are just some of the options we have. Even within each school, you're gonna find that principals will pair up our first year teachers with a more experienced teacher so that they have support that way too. And it may not necessarily be somebody who's in the same grade level or content area. Um, which is actually nice because you get a completely different perspective when you're working with people who don't teach exactly what you do um, every day. Great. Pam, did I miss anything? <laughs> Sounded good. Um, on that same note, uh, what about appropriate resources? What types of resources and where could they find the resources? So our district has done a lot of um, providing our resources digitally, which is nice as opposed to having to go to someone else's classroom or to look in multiple places. Um, a lot of our content resources like your curriculum maps and supporting material, they're all in your portal digitally, which you can access from school or from home. And um, our pacing guides include embedded resources. So if you're looking at your pacing guide at a specific standard, and you're thinking, well, I've taught it one way and my kids still didn't really get it, you're going to find that there's multiple resources linked in that planning guide that you can access directly. A lot of it comes from C Palms, the Department of Education, which has fantastic resources. But I know for myself personally, whenever I get on C Palms, it's kind of like falling down a rabbit hole. I get distracted with all the really cool stuff and forget what I'm there for. Um, so having it in that one location is fantastic. If you're looking for resources as far as student behavior, we've got um, site coaches at our schools who can help you out with that. We have our ESC teachers who are wonderful resources um, as far as behavior management or if you've got to work with a, a student who needs a behavior contract. So whether you're looking for academic resources or you're looking for behavioral resources, um, they're really easy to access. Um, our coaches, like I mentioned earlier, are fantastic about coming into classrooms and they'll model lessons if you're, if you're kind of thinking like, well, I'd like to see what that looks like. They love coming out into the field and getting into classrooms. So you could actually become the student in that case. We also have specialists for each academic area and each exceptional student area as well and they um, go out to classrooms and assist new teachers. Um, you know, all you have to do is uh, shoot them an email and they will come out and help you anytime. Good. I think one of the most important things for new teachers to remember is don't be afraid to ask for help. 
Um, you know, sometimes you might think, oh, well, I'm new, and if I ask for help, they're going to think I don't know what I'm doing. And that is not the case at all. And um, what asking for help shows is that you've reflected on your practice and you've identified areas that you need to grow in order to support students. And every time you ask for help, that's what the people around you see, is that you are putting the needs of your students first and you are stepping out of your comfort zone to ask for help and support. So don't be afraid um, as that new teacher to say, I need some help. How do I do this better? Good point. Um, and that brings me a little bit to my next question, which is um, what kind of advice can you tell new teachers on what to do and what not to do? <laughs> I think and I know one the list can go on forever. So I, know. Try to um, <laughs> I think that this is it, here's a piece of advice, and I've carried this work into every job that I've had regardless of department or grade level is when you get into that school step back and look around and see who is that teacher that makes you say I want to be like them when I grow up and go learn from them and I don't care if they are a completely different department or grade level but you no know good teaching when you see it um, and don't be afraid to, to step up and say you have great classroom management or great rapport with students and great professionalism. Can I come in and observe in your classroom? Can I stop by on my planning period? Can I talk to you after school? Um, would you mind mentoring? And teachers love to share. It's just one of the things they do. So I would definitely find that person you want to be like and spend time with them. And then also you're going to find out very quickly that again, unfortunately, no matter what profession or grade level, there's always, some, I call them grumpy dinosaurs um, that are gonna be around and figure out who they are and just give them a wide berth. Do not hang out with the grumpy dinosaurs um, because you will not see yourself positively. You will not see students positively. If you are hanging around people who always start a conversation with students can't that's just, you're not going to move past that. So really avoid that. Um, some of the things I would say what to do starting from the inception of the process is make sure that you dress appropriately for your interview. Um, I know it's a casual work environment in a lot of places now, but in an interview, you're still expected to dress appropriately, making sure that that uh, skirt um, that you're wearing when you sit down doesn't rise up too high and having the gentleman wear ties so how you present yourself in an interview from the very beginning is important. Um, making sure that you um, are careful with your social media um, because um, keeping it private um, rather than public um, is something we suggest and the principal could very well go on to your um, your uh, media site and take a look at what's on there. So I would be careful with that. Um, making sure that you talk about uh, putting the student first is uh, really important too. So those are some of the things I would add. Backing a little bit off of that is as we move into this realm of virtual interviews, um, I realize my background, which is my backyard, I wouldn't use that as my background if I were doing an interview. Um, I love the lighting on my back porch, not gonna lie, but would I want that to be um, what a principal saw? No, because there's chances are there's things back there that can distract them. Um, so just be very mindful of that. I was speaking with someone the other day who commented that they were participating in a online meeting and someone in the meeting actually was meeting from their bedroom and the view in the background was their messy unmade bed. And again, not the impression you want to give um, in a meeting or in an interview. So just be mindful of, of some of those things. Dr. O'Farrell, come on. Yes. So let's say that I am a well sought out commodity. Why Clay County? I want you to sell Clay County school system to me as a prospective teacher. I'm I'm going to jump in on that one because I actually moved down here having worked in another state and um, 
spent several years out of the classroom before coming into Clay County. And one of the things that I really love about Clay County is that it is personable. That when I needed something in the HR office and I picked up the phone, I got a real life person on the other end of it, not a voicemail that I had to return or wait for someone to return a call on. Um, I like to tell people geographically we're huge, but culturally and, and community wise, it's it's a pretty tight group. So you, you do feel comfortable asking for support. You do get that sense of community when you're out and students see you and they're excited to see you or you're supporting local sporting events or local businesses and you know that it's it's all somehow tied back to our school district because our parents are engaged our community members are engaged um, the other thing i absolutely love about play is that the focus in our classrooms is on the learning um, and it's on students and it's on what's what's best for them so that conversation drives a lot of the decision making. And when I was in the classroom, as long as I was keeping my instruction um, standards based and students focused, I would like to say that I was um, student driven, data informed and standards aligned. And when you make those things happen, you move kids. And that at the end of the day is what Clay County is looking for. And so we very much want to support teachers who, who want to be in the classroom and want to, to keep those three things as their focus. So I've taught in uh, the surrounding counties, so I do have a perspective of why I came to Clay and I've now been here for 25 years. Um, number um, one would be absolutely the atmosphere here. You can get hold of somebody when you need assistance, whether it's human resources, the instructional division. Um, I would also say that our leadership is amazing. Our school-based leadership, um, our principals are very well versed um, in standards, but they're also real people and um, they're a super group of real people. And um, we're also number eight in the state, which is a fantastic thing to be able to brag about. And um, it's nice to be able to work for a county um, that um, does have such a high state. Now, this, this might be something that novice teachers might not be thinking about, but it is important down the road what kinds of opportunities might I have as a professional to receive professional development, to grow, to expand my horizons beyond just being a classroom teacher in Clay County? So we have a system. Um, it's called Elevate here in Clay. And essentially, you can go into the system and anything you are interested in growing professionally, you can just type in the word and it will pull up anything under professional development that Clay is um, offering. Um, it's a great way to just go search for things you're interested in. And also, um, if your principal talks to you about, well, maybe you need to work a little bit on behavior management, you can type in behavior management and you'll get the workshops that Clay has. Um, and then you can register through the system um, to go to those workshops. So it's very teacher driven, which is really nice. Um, and it's also um, based on what needs you have, which I, I really like for us. Anything to add about that, Michelle? Yeah, we've also got some different pathways um, so that as you start to look for leadership roles and how can you be a leader outside of your classroom, um, there's the traditional within your schools of uh, various committees that you can step up and lead. You can look at becoming a department head. You can look at becoming a team lead. Um, we do have pathways for people who become interested in administration. So they can, once they've got that their degree in ed leadership, they can move into the assistant principal pool or the principal pool. But something else that we've really started to look at here in the last year or two and provide opportunities for are what about teachers who want to grow as teacher leaders but do not want to transition into administration? And those are our teachers who want to continue to mentor teachers or to become that clinical educator trained professional so that they can have um, teacher candidates come in and work with them. 
So we are looking at different and developing different pathways for teachers who either want to go the administration route or just want to continue growing in a professional capacity without leaving the classroom. So those are it's nice to have those options where you don't feel pressured to, oh my gosh, the only way forward is to become an administrator. Um, there are wonderful teachers who, who definitely want to be administrators, and then there are teachers who don't have that drive to become an administrator, but they still have the drive to be leaders. So those options are there. Great. Taking all my questions, Dr. O'Farrell. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I, you know, uh, I'm going to touch on this since it's a daily word now, the pandemic, pandemic, however you want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I've said it so many times, now it comes out wrong. Um, what can you say related to the teaching profession in the pandemic and how, um, how should maybe new teachers be thinking and preparing a little bit for the next um, school year? I think for me, one of the things that has come out of this just at the top of the list is the importance in building relationships. And whether that is building relationships with the people in your building so that they can support you professionally and in times like this, where you are depending heavily on one another for resources, for support, and just for basic interaction, but also building those relationships with parents and students. Because I think one of the things that comes just really, really to the forefront through this pandemic is the importance of the partnership between school and home. And we are seeing parents who now are, are having to take on a large responsibility with teaching kids at home and getting that glimpse into, oh my goodness, this really is what goes into teaching children. And it's not as easy as we thought it was. Um, and developing that appreciation and teachers Likewise, developing an appreciation for parents and the role that they play and really building that community so that at the center of our focus is students. Um, so for me, because I'm, I'm at home with my two kids, I'm balancing work, I'm balancing their education. It's been a really interesting perspective shift for me to see, oh my gosh, this is, this is hard from both, both sides. Sam, what about from kind of a, an outside the, the outside. classroom and the, the mom? Mom, well, it's significantly changed um, how we run a school district, an entire school district. Um, but our teachers have done an amazing job. Um, I've seen our teachers who are not super technology oriented, dive right in and ask the questions. Our IT department has done amazing trainings. Um, our children have been provided with the ability to um, participate. Um, every one of them has um, a laptop and if they don't have internet, we've given out hotspots. Um, to reunite out hotspots to teachers even if they didn't have that. So we have like literally jumped in and I feel done an amazing job. Um, I believe we're going to go back to brick and mortar schools in the fall, but I think that this will forever change the perspective on instruction and um, the ability to reach all kids. Um, for those kids that uh, sometimes stay at home um, and disappear for a while. I think that some of our teachers will have the ability and the wherewithal to reach out to those kids virtually. Um, there's students that can't come to school medically um, and this has made it, uh, I de think, definitely easier to reach out to those type of children too. So this has definitely changed our lives forever and the way we do instruction. Without a doubt, it's um, certainly made teacher appreciation. Oh yes, we've had some, we, we have amazing teachers. I love our teachers. That's nice. 
Um, so any other comments that you would like to share with the UNF students that would be helpful? Any websites, um, anything coming up, any emails or contact information that you think would be important to share with the UNF students before we close out this? Well, my email is samantha.wright at myoneplay.net. Um, I would definitely say you can reach out to me anytime about anything. Um, I am definitely the certification person and the person that, if a principal is interested in you, screens your application. So I will look at most of your applications at some point. Um, so um, that would be kind of how. I wrap up, Michelle. Yeah, I'm, I'm Michelle dot Biley, B I L Y, at myoneplay.net. And um, you reach out with any questions through the application process. Um, you just kind of want to touch base on I've submitted my application, what now? Um, I spent a lot of time last summer emailing back and forth with candidates saying, okay, it's all right that you haven't been hired by June 1st. We're still in the thick of the hiring process. Um, you know, just don't worry. So there's a lot of cheerleading, a lot of calming of nerves that can be done. So feel free to reach out for that. Um, visiting the district website is a good one. Again, just kind of getting in there and getting a feel for the different schools for, for what we offer um, would be encouraged as well. Okay, great. Well, thank you both for joining us today and Dr. O'Farrell for your time as well. I think this will be really helpful for our students. So we appreciate you taking the time today to spend it with us. Thank you for inviting Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Thanks.